Okay. So Chris, when did you first get into the arts? I got into the arts um, probably since I was a child. As soon as my ADHD kicked in and I realized that my father was going to abandon me, I found myself alone and isolated in my room playing Lego and Nintendo until I was completely batshit crazy. Who gave you your first start in the industry of uh, acting and comedy? Are you, are you taking photos? I oh, just wanted videos. I did a video. Yeah. I, I just took the whole first question. Okay, yeah, let's do it again. Keep it I'm going. I'm doing it again. Thanks, he question. knows what to do. He's like, I live in LA. Okay, let's go. He's just going to keep this, keep recording. It's probably fascinating. Okay, I'm ready. And next question. Who first gave you your start in film? Uh, my first opportunity in film was a movie. I did a Bollywood movie called Blood of Our Own. It was a national movie or an international movie. Uh, it did quite well. And then I did get my first break in the MMA world for King of the Cage Canada. I was a fight analyst and I was on TSN, the Score Fight Network. And yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. I kind of just got my way in front of the camera and behind the camera. So your comedy that you're uh, doing nowadays, is that, uh, where's your inspiration from that? It's your life, eh? Uh, yeah, I didn't have an easy childhood coming up and I had uh, no choice but to be funny. I'm from a city called Thunder Bay, Ontario. You see in Thunder Bay, if you can't play hockey, they diagnose you with autism. And uh, the crazy thing was, you know, if you weren't funny, everybody there was a Neanderthal. Big, giant people. I was the little dark-skinned kid that nobody knew what nationality I was. I couldn't identify with the Italians because I was also a Caucasian dad. Caucasian dad meant that I didn't have the last name and everybody in Thunder Bay has got the Italian last name. And Italians are crazy because they always say their last name twice, you know? Hey, how you doing? Luci Pavarotto, Pavarotto. And I never had that. It's Lobel. It's a beautiful name if you're from Quebec. So I just had to kind of swing my way, battle my way through the trenches and uh, got me here today. So you do your comedy act with your son sometimes? Uh, my son, Dominic LaBelle, 10 years old. He's the world's youngest comedian. He's a beautiful young man. Uh, I'm very proud of my son. He's been a part of all my promotions as well. He's handed out a million flyers. He's done a ton of social media for me. And uh, truly, he's, uh, he's an inspiration to myself and to, uh, to a lot of people. And uh, he's a beautiful young boy. And he's very modest. And hope, I hope the very best for him. So recently what happened with uh, Stampede and there was a uh, fur coat and uh, it was all over the news. Let's talk about that situation because everything is what it seems but it's not. What, what actually happened that day? I'll keep it very simple. Uh, I was on my way to do a photo shoot over at Stampede. I happened to have a vintage fur coat from Eleganza which you can find on 14th Southwest. That street, beautiful woman named Susan. Uh, she donated the jacket to me a long time ago. It's like a 1940 red fox jacket. It was beautiful. I would hate to see that, you know, any animal or any form of cruelty exists in this world, but it was already made. It's a, it's a jacket that was created, so of course I'm just going to wear it. It's beautiful. And I happened to have a fur hat to go with it. I was on my way to Stampede, and some protesters who were against the rodeo and the things that were happening at Stampede in regards to, like, the, the chuck wagon races and such, they were protesting. I believe they were the PETA group. As I was walking by, I didn't realize as I was, you know, what was happening until I'm like reading the signs and it's like, no rodeo, you know, animals are being hurt, and horses this and that, and I'm like, oh my God, like this, this is too crazy. So my buddy's like, say cheese, and he captured an exact moment of when it was like a bear seeing a lion in the jungle. It's almost like, what are you doing here? Hey bro, what are you doing here? It's like two primal instincts just competing at one time. I was polite. They were polite as well. Uh, there was no photo op. <laughs> I was just me on my way and uh, I have spoken to that particular group and perhaps maybe when Stampede's over maybe we can do something because I do believe in being humane and treating all life humanely and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, it's, you know it was great for them as well. I think they got a great amount of exposure and I believe that I'm pretty excited how things turned out as well because truly I would never harm an animal but I'll wear their skin. I'll wear their coats. I'll wear their, I'll wear their fur. So the controversy of that, though, um, being a comedian, wearing that in front of what they're trying to protest, and then you were in the news from it. What, what's, what's the news saying about it? Well, you know, um, a couple of news figures and public figures in Calgary um, posted the image. And while they posted the image, they had left a few titles and subjective titles in the status or whatever post they made, like, is this right? Is this wrong? And uh, many activists kind of, you know, they shit on it. And, uh, but there was way more positivity. 
I think we live in a society right now where people are kind of a little sick and tired of protesting. Everything's fault. It doesn't matter how you breathe, how you walk. I need a safe space. I can't look at you this way. I don't know what gender this person is. It's just, it's become too much. You know, it's like constantly walking on eggshells. I think at the end of the day, we should just be human beings and just accept each other for who they are. We don't need to protest it, and we also don't need to promote it. If you are who you are, your personality should just shine through. You don't need anybody to defend you. Be a human being, be an adult, and defend yourself. I think we can all make the choices. I mean, I'm 40 years old. I'm going to be who I am, and that's life. That's awesome, Chris. What's your advice for people who want to be a, in the arts and a comedian? Well, if you want to be a comedian, be prepared to be broke, uh, be prepared to be ostracized, and be prepared to uh, give up everything you have to hopefully accomplish a moment of success. When it eventually comes, make sure to write, have good jokes, and you know the people you work with. Make sure to like be humble, you know, on the way up, on the way down, because I mean it's the arts, you know. You have a there's an expiration date to it, and uh, so hopefully you know you work hard and uh, you treat those around you with respect. Awesome.